Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Scary Stories for Brave Kids. Tonight's story, we are going to be telling a folk tale from Ireland. Um, it is known as Mary Culhane and the Dead Man, or sometimes it's known as the Blood Drawing Ghost. So let's begin. Long ago in Ireland, there lived a girl named Mary Culhane. She lived with her mother, father, and six brothers and sisters. They were very poor and lived in a small shack on the end of town. Her father worked as a gravedigger in the town's cemetery. One day he came home late, utterly exhausted. As soon as he sat down, he clapped a hand to his forehead. Oh no, he said. I left my blackthorn walking stick back in the graveyard. I should go back and get it. Someone might steal it. Mary knew that the walking stick was very important to her father. It was the only thing his father, Mary's grandfather, had given him before he died. Mary said, I'll go get it for you, Father. And then she grabbed her shawl and hurried out the door before anyone could stop her. No one ever went to the cemetery after dark, but Mary wasn't afraid. She had been there many times with her father and knew the graveyard very well. When she reached the gates, a full moon shone bright in the sky. Mary made her way among the graves, being careful not to step on any, for it was bad luck to do so. She spotted her father's walking stick leaning against an old oak tree. Eager to bring the stick home, she forgot to look where she was going and lost her footing, falling straight into an open grave. Mary quickly got to her hands and knees, but before she could climb back up, she froze as she felt something crawl on her back. Skeletal fingers curled around her shoulders and she could feel breathing on her neck. Ah, Mary, a voice rasped in her ear. I have been waiting a very, very long time for someone to drop in. <laughs> now get up. You must take me into town, for I hunger and I thirst. Mary wanted to tell the creature no, but all of a sudden, her will was not her own. With the creature still clinging to her back, Mary got up and with great difficulty managed to pull herself and the creature out of the grave. She collapsed on the grass, trying to catch her breath. Get up, Mary, the creature screamed in her ear. Get up and take me into town. With the creature still clinging to her back, Mary slowly got to her feet and trudged towards the town. When they reached the main road, the creature pointed to the first house they saw. There, take me into that house so that I may feed. Mary climbed to the first step, then the second, then the third, and then she reached for the door. No! The creature cried. No, not this one. Not this one. I smell the stench of holy water. Mary stepped back down the stairs and started back down the road. The creature pointed to the next house. That one. Take me to that house so that I may feed. Once again, Mary climbed the steps and reached for the door. No, 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 the creature cried again. Not this one. I smell the stench of holy water. Take me away at once. Mary slowly went back to the main road again, and the creature made her stop in front of the next house. Yes, this one. Take me into this house so that I may feed. As before, Mary climbed the steps and reached for the door. She waited for the creature to say something, but he didn't. She pushed open the door. Yes, Mary, this will do. Take me into the kitchen and find me something to eat. Mary plodded down the hall to the kitchen. The creature slid off her back and into a chair at the table. Be quick about it, he snapped. I don't have much time. Mary searched the entire kitchen, but all she could find was some oatmeal and dirty water. Bah! How dare these people not leave me anything to eat? I shall have to teach them a lesson. Mary, let me on your back. Mary did as she was ordered, lifting the creature onto her back once again. Now, upstairs. Mary tried to stay where she was, for she knew the family who lived in this house. There were three boys, all who went to the same school as her, who slept upstairs. But the creature's spell over her was too strong, and she had no choice but to trudge up the stairs. And there in the moonlight, she saw the three boys 
fast asleep in their beds. The creature slid off Mary's shoulder, shoulders and pulled out a sharp knife and a cup. He went over to each boy, one at a time, and pricked each one's finger, gathering blood in his cup. With the first drop of blood, their breathing stopped. With the second drop of blood, their heart stopped beating. And with the third drop of blood, all life left their bodies. His grim task complete, the creature climbed on Mary's back once again, clutching the cup. Back down to the kitchen, Mary, so that we may feast. Horrified at what had just happened, Mary did as she was commanded. In the kitchen, the creature slid from her back into the chair at the table. He ordered Mary to prepare the oatmeal and to put it into two bowls. Once the oatmeal was done, she set it in front of the creature. He took his cup and poured the blood evenly over the two bowls. He pushed one of them towards Mary. Eat this. No, Mary cried. Do it and do it now. Mary picked up a spoon and brought a spoonful of the terrible oatmeal to her lips. The creature nodded, satisfied, and picked up his bowl, slurping up the horrible mixture. While he couldn't see her, Mary put her still full spoon back into the bowl. She quickly untied the neckerchief from her neck and dumped the oatmeal into it. She set down her empty bowl just as the creature finished his. Ah, you ate it all. Very good. Now clean up so no one knows that we were here. Mary took the two bowls and washed them, waiting until the creature looked away to put the bowls and the neckerchief full of oatmeal into the cabinet. Hurry, Mary, the creature snapped. I must be back in my grave before morning. Mary walked over and let the creature climb on her back once more. She started back the way they had entered, but the creature hissed, Sss, no, 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 we must not leave by the way we came. Evil creatures always had to return by a different path. Mary went out through the back door instead. Once outside, she stopped when the creature started laughing. <laughs> Tell me what you see, Mary. I see three hills. They call them the Haunted Hills. That's right. Do you know why they call them that, Mary? I'll tell you. Buried in the middle hill is all of the gold and silver that me and my kind have gathered over the years. And you know, only the dead know about it. <laughs> this made very, Mary truly afraid for her own life now that she too knew about the treasure. But you will never have that gold, Mary, the creature hissed, because you ate the bloody oatmeal. You will now be my servant forever. Mary and the creature went on to the night, and as Mary walked, the creature laughed and taunted her, telling her terrible tales that no one should ever hear. Eventually, he began to gloat. You know, if those boys were to drink of their own blood, they could have come back to life. Oh, but I ate all of my portion, and you ate all of yours, and now all of the blood is gone, and there is no way they can come back to life. As the cemetery gates came into view, a rooster crowed. Mary, what is that terrible noise? Mary knew what the sound was, and that it meant that morning was near. But she said, I think it's just the bleeding of a sheep. Well, hurry, I must get back to my grave. Mary entered the graveyard and started carefully maneuvering around the graves, careful not to step on any, when the rooster crowed again. Ah, oh, that noise again. Mary, what is it? It's nothing but a dog barking. Ah, oh, Mary, hurry, I can feel myself weaken. Mary saw the grave and trudged over to it. And just then, the rooster crowed a third time, and the sun peeped over the horizon. The creature fell from Mary's back and into the grave. When Mary didn't fall in with him, he realized that Mary hadn't eaten the oatmeal after all. <sighs> well played, Mary, she heard his voice say. If I'd known you were going to live this night, I never would have told you about my gold. Her will returned to her. Mary grabbed her father's walking stick, still leaning against the tree, and hurried home. She fell into her bed and into a deep sleep. 
A couple hours later, Mary's mother ran into her room. Mary, wake up. Something terrible has happened. The three boys from your school, they're... Mary jumped out of bed. Her hair was matted and her clothes filthy from the night before. She cleaned herself up as quickly as she could and changed her clothes, then ran out the door to her classmate's house. When she got there, the entire town was outside trying to console the grieving parents. Please let me inside, Mary said to the father. Oh, Mary, I'm afraid I can't do that. What is upstairs is something no child should ever see. You don't understand, Mary cried. I think I might be able to save their lives. Mary, if you are able to save them, I would give you anything that's in my power to give. I ask for nothing, Mary said, only to be allowed to go in alone. The father cleared the house and Mary went inside alone. She hurried to the kitchen, opening the cabinet, where the two bowls and the neckerchief sat right where she had left them the night before. She grabbed a spoon and ran upstairs. She went over to each boy, one at a time, and gently put a spoonful of the bloody oatmeal to each of their lips. With the first drop of blood, they started to breathe. With the second drop of blood, their hearts began to beat. And with the third drop of blood, all life returned to their bodies. Mary and all three boys, now alive and well, stepped outside, and the entire town rejoiced. The father came up to Mary with tears in his eyes. Mary, you've made me the happiest man alive. You brought my boys back. I must give you something in return. Whatever you want, it's yours, anything at all. Mary thought for a moment and then asked, would you give me the land behind your house? The one with the three hills? That and more. And so the father gave Mary the deed to the land. And in time, Mary fell in love and married the oldest of the three boys. Mary and her husband decided to build their house on the land with the three hills, right on the middle hill. And when they dug down to build the foundation for their new house, they found a treasure trove of gold and silver. As the years passed, the events of that night faded away like a bad dream. But there was one thing that Mary never forgot. To always keep holy water by the front door.